R.I.P. Fife Dog, Malik Taylor, the Five Foot Assassin, Tribe Called Quests. Never, never not in our hearts. I just have one question. Is the Low End Theory a concept album about the Red Bull's place in the Eastern Conference standings? Oh, got him! Another big story a lot of folks have been following. Five members of the World Cup champion U.S. Women's National Team suing the U.S. Soccer Federation over unequal pay. Now, this is not a complicated issue, and the conversation should not be, all right, well, let's figure out how to get the ladies equal compensation for the men. If anything, the ladies, if you look at overall popularity, if you look at global dominance, track record of success, uh, if you look at name recognition uh, for the players relative to others in their field, uh, no matter how you look at it, but I mean, the TV ratings are perhaps most important. It is the men who should be trying to justify why they ought to be paid as much as the women. There's simply no question. The most dominant international soccer club in the world, regardless of gender, is the U.S. women's national team. The gap between them and the Peloton is much greater, much greater than anything we've conceived of on the men's side uh, in many, many generations, to say the very least. Um, and that's even being pretty fair for the men. But let's talk about the numbers as we have a little documentary from U.S. Soccer about the Women's World Cup run in Canada going on in the background. U.S.A. Now, when the U.S. women play a game and they win, uh, an international friendly match, for instance, they receive uh, each player a bonus of $1,350. If they lose or they draw, they get no bonus in an international friendly. Now the men win, lose, or draw in any friendly. They get $5,000, no matter what. So they get uh, more than three times as much, am I doing the math right? More than three times as much uh, to, to lose or draw in a friendly as the women get to win. Keep in mind, the men's team is terrible, awful, hot garbage. The women's team is the best in the world. Now. If the men beat a team ranked in the FIFA top 10 in the world rankings, again, in a friendly match, each player gets a bonus of over $17,000. Now, what about the women if they beat a team in the top 10? The same $1,350 that they would have gotten for beating anyone. And, of course, they get nothing if they don't win. None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense if you compare it to revenues. It's the same U.S. soccer organization that oversees the men as well as the women. It, 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 why, would, why would they keep the revenue in, 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 in separate piles? Why does it even matter? Why does it even matter? The people are putting in the same work. The people, we're, we're not talking about uh, U.S. soccer as a for-profit entity. It'd be one thing if they were a, a private company with stockholders. Then, then just the, the cold hard facts of the, the commerce behind it end up being king, don't they? But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a nonprofit entity in U.S. soccer that does anything it can to not do right by its ladies. We made a video a while back arguing something that we will continue to argue today. The women's national team needs to split from the U.S. Soccer Federation, and also, while it's at it, women's teams need to split from FIFA entirely. The Panama Papers just uh, doubled and tripled down to what we already knew about FIFA as an organization. It can't do right by anybody. It's rampant, absolutely rampant with corruption top to bottom. Mail fraud, wire fraud, tax evasion, widespread white collar criminal activity. Just like in women's tennis and women's golf, you can put on the same nature of events, your World Cups, your continental championships, by putting in, in place a different organization to oversee them. Just like the ATP and uh, the WTA are not the same organization, just like the PGA and the LPGA uh, are technically separate governing bodies with slightly different interests in mind, uh, we've seen how this, was, has this, this has allowed women's golf, women's tennis, just to name a couple of examples, to flourish. Why can't we put the ladies first when it comes to women's soccer? Gone would be the days of forcing them to play on turf fields with an increased chance of injury. Gone would be the days of teams having to sue their own federations in developed nations, the most industrialized countries in the world. We could end this overnight. The recent lawsuit from these five players against the U.S. Soccer Federation is not going to be the end of it. They can take power into their own hands, and I really hope they do it split from the Federation, split from FIFA, and lead the world as you do on the field already. We love you, ladies. Good luck.